Hey guys, it's Penelope in London. Today I'm sharing with you Pluto through the seventh house and in Libra. And Pluto is important in evolutionary astrology because it shows our soul. And as I run through these slides, you're going to see the importance of what that means for you if you have Pluto in the seventh house. So let me see what I'm doing here. Okay, here it goes. All right, so I'm going to shrink this down. And here goes. So Pluto in evolutionary astrology relates to the soul and the soul's underlying evolutionary desires. It is the depth of our unconscious and out of our awareness. And we can see that we may repeat in life unwanted patterns or experience the same repeating life lessons. And our Pluto placement and our transit holds information that when understood can smooth our passage through time and through life. So astrology, basically looking at a chart, we're able to see the natal chart, a snapshot of the heavens, and then we can see the transits that are taking place based on our date, time, and place of birth. And it's been very healing for me. Um, looking at my own astrology has really helped me in my life to heal early childhood trauma and understand my, and know myself, and it's helped me to become individuated which is um, part of the work of Carl Jung. So let's go here, reading on a bit more. So knowing our Pluto placement and our chart helps us to objectify and to look at our life and know self. And like the self there with a capital S is because the self, it's the, it's the higher self, the God self. It's um, you know, not the small self that we think we are, just this human being in the body where we're, we're infinite and expansive so that's why it has a capital s for sugar so there you go the transit and our solar returns and our aspects to pluto show us what is being reborn and what is dying or stale and what needs to be changed or released it is looking to see what needs to end to allow for rebirth and for the regeneration to occur in our lives through life we experience dark nights of the soul and this is a door to the deeper self. Our life experiences need to be examined so any wounding or painful events can be thawed out which allows for a rebirth to take place. We are here to live fully with an open heart and explore the world and to transform and transmute that which holds us back. And I think we can all agree with that. And dark nights of the soul, it's, you know, people hit low points and it can be very difficult when that happens when we don't understand what's going on. And astrology... Um, and understanding Pluto and our North Node and our South Node can really throw a lot of light on what's really going on for us. That's been my experience of looking at my own chart and other peoples that I look at. So the big question that generally when we have a dark night of the soul or hit bottom, we will ask the question, why am I here? Some people might do that prior to that, but generally when people come to astrology, they want to know why am I here? What am I doing in my life? Um, now here, I'm showing you my, as an example of my solar return chart. I was born on the 21st of May, 1966. And my solar return chart, um, this is from the 21st of May, 19, from 19, 2019. So this chart was where the planets fall on that date. So that shows the year ahead for me um this is the one way of looking at your chart so on your birthday you could have a solar return which will show what you're working on throughout the year and what energies you're dealing with and you might be able to see there i don't know if you can see my mouse but you've got the fourth house on this solar return chart it's got pluto which is in the fourth house for me in capricorn and it looks like it's in aquarius but it's actually the degree is in Capricorn and Pluto is in Capricorn at the moment so this is my birth natal chart and the planets this is a snapshot of the heavens at the moment time that we're born and that's what a natal chart is and then what we have is that we have the transits the little green symbols on the outside of the wheel they are called transits so this will show what is going on in our lives today and the, all of the bits in the middle there the lines they are called aspects they're the planets speaking to each other if you've never seen a chart before and don't know what it is that's what is going on there so next slide 
a natal chart, it represents our potential and it also represents what we have been and where we are at and what we can become. And Pluto works in three ways in our chart. It can be, number one, cataclysmic due to resistance. Two, that we're willing to change in some ways and resisting in other ways out of fear or uncertainty. And three, to jump in with one's heart and soul with the desire to understand and learn and eliminating resistance. So I'll just explain to you, if you don't understand what resistance means, it would be like a simple example would be that if you went out and it was raining and you had an umbrella and you did not want to get wet, let's say you just had your hair done or something and a, you had a nice outfit on and you didn't want to get wet, but you were resisting putting up the umbrella because you didn't want to put up the umbrella because you didn't want to be seen with an umbrella, for instance. That would mean that you're resisting putting up the umbrella, which is then going to give you a cataclysmic event, maybe not a big one, but you're going to get wet, basically. And so if we don't act on things, then we're resisting and they can become uncomfortable. So we have free will and knowing this means we get to make choices. It is important we look at the totality of the chart and in evolutionary astrology, the baseline used will be and is Pluto and the North Node and the South Node. So that's worth knowing the, what evolutionary astrology means and what it is. And that's the, um, the school of Jeff Wolf Green as well. Now we've got Pluto in the seventh house I'm going to read to you. If you've popped on this video, that's really what you want to hear. But it's good to know the understanding, the other bits. I like this picture I found on Google. And that's to do with partnerships and relationships. That we're, we're more intimate with each other. Um, here I will read. And it says, Pluto is here. Here is about close relationships and partnerships, a time of evolving how we approach relationships. Our attitudes and our needs and our values are being looked at here. Here we have a Venus connection as Venus rules Libra. And here we may see past life connections and renewals in connections from relationships that occurred earlier in our life or in past lives. If you know, We've all got different beliefs, but I do believe in past lives. And that's what we work on in evolutionary astrology, the South Node. It is important to look at Venus connections here to see if aspects are harmonious or stressful. So we know what we are dealing with in life. Stress means something is unresolved and needs to be resolved. The non-stressful aspects point to new messages that are needed, that we need, and resistance can be felt around unresolved issues. The past needs to be resolved so we can move forward. When the past is cleaned up, then new experience can be experienced fully and integrated. The past can affect the future. Confrontations or clashes are not all negative. Although we look at them that way in life, they're not all negative because um, they allow for a new cycles to be born and for transformation to occur in our own lives. Because we are dealing with individuals, each case will vary. Sinistry charts can show what needs to be addressed or what is being addressed, but clearly, or what's happening, but clearly this is dependent on knowing the time of birth, details of another to get a full picture. Resolving past issues is the main theme here, a time to not react, but to look at how we act and contemplation will help here. And I will add, I'm going to read on a bit more on Pluto, what it means in the seventh house of Libra, but also what we have is that we basically are looking at relationships and as we evolve, you know, we evolve through relationships, like without relationships are our teacher as well, which um, we learn something and we evolve in every single relationship we have. So here we have, um, often we react to a person in stressful confrontation in the same ways due to our triggers or other circumstances that are unhealed. To heal these wounds, we need to react in a new way. And here we may also end bonds in a clean manner. The point will be to resolve and release. When we resolve with another, some relations may flourish as the resolution then allows for new needs to be redefined and met. Thought out responses instead of reactionary responses work better here. This is the time of change and having our needs met. This will also apply to others who are in relationship with us wanting their needs met. 
Stressful aspects cause confrontations and non-stressful aspects allow for growth. This is a time of our updated and new essential needs being brought to light and done consciously. We get to transcend and to evolve to have our new needs met. This also applies to the new needs of others. Needs are not, not being met in a relationship leads to endings and breakdowns in communication. New people will also come into our lives at this time. It is important to look at all interactions with others from a karmic point of view. If we have come to a point of no growth there is another uh, with another, we need to be straightforward in our dealings and break in a very clean way. New intimate relationships should not be started until matters have been dealt with in the current intimate relationship. It is more appropriate karmically to end relations with no hard feelings. Time spent with, other, with an, another discussing differences may lead to a fresh new start and new beginnings. We are, all growing. we are all growing. In order to resolve issues, we need to be transparent with another. And this is a time of listening and to take into account not only our reality, but the reality of others. In a discussion and in listening, we learn what each other's needs are. Any restrictions of, or feelings of restriction may bring the relationship to an end so that both individuals can then move on onto those who can meet their needs. So we can see how this plays out in life. I've got three planets in um, the seventh house. And the seventh house for me is Gemini, but it also is Libra, it's um, synastry, we're bringing it all together. So I've got Jupiter and I've got my sun and I've got my moon there. So this, what I've just read, can be looked at on the basis of a solar return. It can be looked on as a transit, but it can also be related to as Pluto in your seventh house at birth or in Libra. Next slide. I like this saying, and this is um, Yoganda. And I don't know if you've ever read the autobiography of the yogi, but I've listened to it mainly on Audible and I love it. So it's got some gems in there and stories. But he says that mankind is engaged in an internal quest for that something else he hopes will bring him happiness, complete and unending. For those individuals, those who have sought and found God, the search is over. He is that something else. So really, even in relationship, we're constantly being sent back to ourselves because the ultimate relationship is with self with the capital S. And it means that through others, we learn and grow and develop and we're helping each other to evolve as souls on planet Earth. Those are my beliefs and, you know, part of my work in evolutionary astrology and what I'm working on in complex PTSD trauma with my wisdom on that knowledge. So finally, um, nearly done, we've got Carl Jung um, who worked with Freud. Um, he was 20 years younger than Freud, but Carl Jung brought psychotherapy to us as we n now know it. Jung, if you have not don't know who he is, you can Google his name to become familiar. So he says, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. So if you think about that, if we don't dig and look at our shadow side or the deep depths of us, then things are going to happen to us and we're going to say, oh, that's really horrible, that happened to me. So in a way, many ways, I see how Pluto has a direct connection to that statement in my understanding and knowledge and reading. And he also says, what you resist not only persists, but it will grow in size. So it's like that metaphor I used, if you don't put that umbrella up, you're going to get wet. So resistance. Resistance determines the magnitude of our problems or confrontations. And finally, so the source material here, it's Jeffrey Wolf Green, Pluto One, The Evolutionary Journey of the Soul, and Carl Jung, various quotes, and also Uganda, a quote there, and my pictures came from Google. So that's it. And if you want me to look at your chart with you and look at any healing, you can check me out or email me, but all of my details will below, be below the video. And I hope you enjoyed that.